I don't mean to go deep. Jesus, what did no. you do to me? You went deep on me last Listen, time too. I, I, you keep I'm getting sorry. me in trouble. <laughs> Why do I open up to you? Listen, I'm not going to argue with it because I'm nice. I'm trustworthy. You just, you know, this is our third time together, Melissa. Come on. Don't you think that's the right way to think about it? That it's not about me. It's, y- yes. I mean, uh, first of all, there's so much because I'm, you know, close. We're basically the same age. Yeah. So the fact that the average life expectancy is in the 70s, I, I can't even comment on that because then you do do the math and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? That's a one whole thing. But yeah, I mean, I guess you are right. Like, you know, if you think back to like when we were children, you did always look at the children that had the older parents, whether that's right or not. Children don't think that way. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. and then you do leave a child with no parents at an earlier age. Granted, I don't think 50 is old. No, no, but I also think, but yeah. well, how does that affect my son's life? Did Cooper have any thoughts on this when you... You know, Cooper's Cooper's living Cooper's life. And it's not really something I wasn't in a place to start to talk to him about it. And for you know, whenever I had, he's like, that'd be great. Da, 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 da. He always wanted that, especially when he was younger. But I think he doesn't understand that that would mean it's his responsibility later in life. Yeah. And because there would be such remember, Cooper's 21, there would be a huge age gap. So he would then end up being responsible for a much younger sibling. And is that right to do to him? Sometimes I overthink things and I get like kind of paralyzed by the whole thing. And you can tell I've overthought this. But at least this is like a life decision. You know, listen, you're overthinking your vanity mirror and whether to adopt a child. So these are, these are important things. Oh, and because they're so equal. Exactly. And your mom would have just been like, what the hell is wrong with you, Melissa? You should have done this six years ago. Yes. She would say, stop thinking. Just do. Don't, yeah. Because I will paralyze myself over thinking things. And everything in you life. See, by the way, you should see me try and pick, pick a paint color. You want to be paralyzed. Your designer must love you every time you move, then you have to go through all these decisions. Are they just used to you by now? Or are they just like, okay, she's going to take a minute to make a decision. Well, what I do is I always say, you figure it out. And then here's, we walk around and here's what I'm thinking. And then bring me, spin your ideas off that, but don't bring me that many samples. Don't bring me like 20 greens. Right. Let me start with like four. And if I don't like any of those, we'll go to another one, but don't overwhelm me because they bring out that paint sample thingy with the, the little fan thing. And that's like my favorite thing. I'll sit there and play with that all day. All, all colors are not created equal. Try to do gray. I always do a gray. Grays are hard. Excuse me. My bathroom is gray. My bedroom is gray. And then it's like a whole, well, what's the undertone? That's what it is with the grays. I like a gray with like a light, like purple opal essence undertone. So many grays are either blue or like brown or green. And then you step away and you're like, is this brown? And then most people tell me I'm crazy. They're like, there's no color that is except gray. And I'm like, now I see brown. So now I'm upset. I completely, I feel your pain. It's gray. It's everything in my house is gray. But it's white, but good luck choosing a white. That's hard too. Oh my God. Oh, choosing a white is impossible. I would think that would be so easy. Well, no, it's got, you've got pink undertone. You've got yellow undertones. You have white that's too bright. You have ones that you put on the wall and they look kind of dingy. Oh, it's like, it's, it's, the struggle is real. (laughs) Listen, when it comes to home decor, I am, Jeff Lewis would approve of anywhere that I live because it's like, you could eat off the floors. Other than that, I'm a mess in my life, but not in my home. It needs to be like, Christian gray, 50 shades of gray, like crazy cold. Well, speaking of Madonna, because you mentioned her in this book also, your mother, you know, notoriously made fun of her on Fashion Police and like a lot of other people. But, you know, it's, you mentioned in the book, like she really respected Madonna's. Like, is that true? You know, that she respected Madonna. 100%. My mom, you know, respected all strong women. But boy, oh boy, did she respect Madonna. 
Did you or her know Madonna? Uh, met a few times, met a few times, but she really, you know, talk about someone who they knock her down, she gets back up. They knock her down, she gets back up. They knock her down, she gets back up. I mean, talk about a fighter. Listen, she was a trailblazer. Like you said, knock her down, she gets back up. She never takes no for an answer. She was the first in so many categories and she has no problem telling someone to fuck off. I mean, am I the only one that sees similarities between Madonna and Joan Rivers? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's why, even though we made fun of what she was wearing, my mom really did respect her and her work ethic. Yeah. I think your mother would have a field day with her Instagram these days. Oh, I think my mother would be, I'm, I'm just happy that we don't, we never got to experience my mother on Instagram. She was not, it was never safe to let her loose with any kind of technology. First of all, she was horrible at operating it. Second of all, you know, the last thing she needed was a megaphone at her fingertips. It was bad enough when she was on Twitter. I couldn't imagine her on Instagram. I mean, look, we all have trolls, right? No matter what alleged you are. I mean, she, I would probably just, I don't think she'd be quiet, right? I don't, I don't think we would have taught her how to actually read comments. Just how to post. We just, not even how to post, just how to take a picture and write a caption and let others do the technical part for our own personal safety. We don't need her in the middle of the night answering people. That would have been, she probably would have loved it. She would have, but she probably would have been canceled. That's true. Especially with the world of what we're in today. Of what we live in now, yes. Was there anyone, you know, like I make a joke about like Madonna, was there anyone, you know, like Snoop and Martha, like now we all know this is a thing. Was there anyone like your mother was really close to that we would be shocked to find out? Oh, probably. I need to think. Um... I mean, I know she was close to, you know, everyone loved Joan Rivers, but it just made me think when we mentioned Madonna. Oh God, who was she close to? She had such an eclectic circle of friends. Um, I don't know, that's a tough one. I think she had some unusual relationships um, with the artist Rauschenberg. I don't think anybody would have, ever expected that no you know and they were friends I I think well I think we can go right to Charles and Camilla that's true that's not a friendship that you would think 